a master of disguises, a musician, a womanizer, and Victorian England's most notorious criminal. Dramatist Michael Eaton is bringing back to life Charlie Peace. First at the Playhouse, courtesy of some amazing visuals from Eddie Campbell, and later for Dawn of the Unread, an interactive graphic novel. Here Michael tells us a little bit more about the myth that is Charles Peace. I used to be Napoleon in a waxwork show Oh, the people, they admired me so But now I've had bad luck They've melted down me grease They put me in the chamber of horrors and called me Charlie Peace I thought Charlie Peace was a kind of legendary character a mythological figure, a sort of a bogeyman But when he was on the run after he'd murdered his, um, his lover's husband, when he was on the run, he came down to live in Narra Marsh in Nottingham, living under an alias, of, of, of course. But then things got hot for him. He moved to London and he was eventually caught robbing a villa in, in, in Blackheath. And later it was realised that this man that they'd arrested there was public enemy number one, Charles Peace, the Bannercross murderer, the murderer of the husband of his lover, Mr. Dyson, with a hundred guineas reward on his head. Now, what's fascinating about Charlie to me is the way in which this real man, very quickly, soon after his arrest, his trial and his execution, turned, was turned by the mass media, I should say, was turned into a legendary figure. And this started with this amazing book that I have here, which is a penny dreadful um, called Charles Peace or the Adventures of a Notorious Burglar. Now the penny dreadful was a publishing phenomenon throughout the 19th century. Though, as, as the name implies, they, were, they cost a penny, they were published weekly, and they would run for as long as the public were buying them. And they were much more popular in terms of sales. They would feature lurid stories, stories that um, the middle classes condemned as having a terrible effect on juvenile delinquency. But some of them would, would be precisely mythological characters, characters like Sweeney Todd, like Varney the Vampire, like um, Spring Heel Jack, the Terror of London. But Charlie Peace was a real character, but during the course of, 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 the, of the, the decades after his execution, he was turned into this legendary figure. Now, the, the Penny Dreadfuls ran, this particular one, ran for 100, 100 episodes, that's nearly two years, and each one would have an engraving, a woodcut picture, at the front of, uh, 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 of each one. So Charlie not only gets turned into a legend, he gets turned into an image, yeah? He gets turned into an icon, a, a drawn picture, and then blow me down, if, uh, if he doesn't re-emerge in our generation, those of us who are my age probably first encountered Charlie in the 1960s when he became a running character in Buster Comic. The very first of these, The Astounding Adventures of Charlie Peace, beautifully drawn and really, in a sense, not too far away from history. They're very dark, almost noir type uh, stories. Charlie is depicted, as he was in real life, as a very fine musician and as an expert burglar. And, um, of course, the terror of the, the, the police, the crushers as they're called in the strip, of, of London. But gradually, as the comic went on, he becomes more and more likeable, a more and more like a, a lovable rogue, a, a Robin Hood type of figure who steals from the rich and then disperses his ill-gotten gains amongst the poor. Charlie changes completely even in this Buster comic strip. Now, in 1968, the uh, writers and artists of, uh, of this strip 
started to run out of Victorian stories to tell. And so there was this amazing moment when Charlie was tricked by a mad scientist to go into this cabinet, which turned out to be a time machine. And he came to in, not in Victorian London, but in the London of 1968, the London of mini cars and mini skirts. And so Charlie now was a villain in our own time. And then, amazingly, he makes another appearance a few years ago, in 2006, in this comic, um, Albion, which was written by the, the, the great graphic novel novelist writer Alan Moore and his daughter and son-in-law, Leah Moore and John Repian. Now, the basis of Albion comics is, is that it takes characters that we knew from our childhood in those old um, IPC and Fleetwood comics. They're kind of the eccentric, bizarre British superheroes, and it brings them back to life. And here, indeed, is Charlie, a really rather um, scary figure amongst the tower blocks of, of South London, or Liverpool, I think it's actually set in, with two pistols in his hand, still recognisably Victorian, but in our world. Unlike some of the other characters in The Dawn of the Unread, Charlie himself is not a writer. He's somebody who was written about, and he was somebody who was drawn about. And, and, and so Charlie's got to come alive again in, in, in the Nottingham of today, and um, somehow or other he's got to be involved with this mission to make reading still alive in, in the world today, because he's not somebody who's a writer, but he's somebody who's written about.